Hello everybody, so today before we start the video proper, I'm really excited to announce that I've uh, teamed up with Notino, my new sponsors, and in this video, we're gonna be offering an exciting giveaway. So uh, I'm gonna be giving away to uh, two lucky subscribers, uh, a first prize and a runner's up prize. The first prize is a bottle of the new fragrance from Versace, Dylan Blue, a really great fragrance. And the runner's up prize is two bottles. Okay, hello everybody again. So, uh, thanks for joining me today. First of all, thanks to everyone who's voted in the league table video. That's the previous video, and uh, I'm gonna I'm still counting up the votes and taking note of all the votes that come in. And uh, in the next video, I'll be putting the updated league table. It won't just be a league table video. I'll be doing something else. Uh, but at the end of the video, we'll see how the league table's looking and if anything's changed. So, into the today's review then, I'm gonna do a versus video. Why am I doing Green Irish Tweed versus Bois de Portugal? Uh, first of all, it just tends to get more people interested if you have that kind of format, if you just review one fragrance. Uh, you don't tend to get so many people watching, even if it's a really good one. Uh, and But if we have that, that angle on it, it just makes it more fun. Also, they are a little bit similar to me in that they both came out in the mid-1980s, so they're both really long-standing Creed fragrances, and they both have a real classic gentleman feel, although the actual notes and smell are quite different I think they, they both would perhaps appeal to some extent to the same kind of people and perhaps they might be worn in, in similar situations when you want to feel classy and perhaps when you're dressed up very smartly although as I've said the smells are very different so first of all we're going to talk about green Irish tweed the classic gentleman's fragrance from the house of Creed there it is and this one was released back in 1985 top notes according to the Creed website on green Irish tweed are lemon verbena and peppermint in the mid, we have violet leaves, and in the base, we've got iris, sandalwood, and ambergris. None of that particularly helps you to understand how it's gonna smell. The overall feeling that you get with this one is a very green, fresh smell, and it is reminiscent of freshly cut grass, and it is supposed to evoke a walk in the Irish countryside, and indeed, it does that very well. Not that walking in the Irish countryside would literally smell much like, like this, but that idea of a green, fresh feeling that you might picture if you saw a lovely picture of the Irish countryside is conjured up by this beautiful fragrance. So it's really a very classic, elegant fragrance. Performance, I found, is very good. I get a great longevity on this and a pretty decent sillage. It's not a beast mode scent, but I find that it is a good performing scent. I know people complain about Creed performance on some of their scents, like Millicium Imperial, but for me, and from what I gather from most people who talk about it, Green Ice Treed is pretty good. So it's compared often to Davidoff's Cool Water, and yes, having sniffed that many times, I can see and smell the, the similarity. However, this is like the upscale version. This came along first, that came along later. It's said that Pierre Bourdon, the perfumier for Cool Water, was the man behind this one, although officially it's just a, by the Creed noses who did it. Uh, but I can see that it's very possible that he may have been involved because there is such a similarity, but it's like he did this one with a much higher budget and more natural smelling ingredients. This is just superbly well blended, superbly versatile, and it has timeless elegance about it. It goes perfectly when you're dressed up. You don't have to be wearing green Irish tweed though. Anything from sort of smart casual upwards is gonna be appropriate in terms of attire when wearing this one. It's a great daytime scent, works well in the spring. People always seem to say it's a spring scent, but it's much more than that. It's great for the autumn time. I could, I would even honestly wear it in the depths of winter, although some people say they, they want something a bit more rich and deep, but I would find it fine all year round and actually daytime or nighttime. It's not massively seductive or sexy, but it's classy, elegant, fresh, green, crisp, and it just has this somewhat atavistic, this uh, nostalgic feel about it, but with, somehow without being at all dated or feeling like it's stuck in the 80s. So if you smell things like Koros from the 80s, um, or if you smell some of the other big, you know, Van Cleef and Arpels pour on, some of these do smell a little dated and you might like that, but this one somehow feels right at home in the modern era and it's a beautiful scent. For me, it's a 10 out of 10 in Creed's line of fragrances. I would rate it slightly higher. I enjoy it a little bit more than Aventus, which I'd probably put at about a nine out of 10 for me. So a great fragrance from Creed. And here's the one that I'm gonna compare it to. That is Bois de Portugal. This was released in 1987. 
couple of years later and it has in common with that one that it has a very gentlemanly feel about it. Top notes on Boada Portugal, we have bergamot and lavender. In the mid, we have cedarwood. And in the base, we have sandalwood, vetiver, and ambergris. Depending where you go, some of those notes are top notes or mid notes, it seems to differ, but I got mine from the Creed website. So what you get with this one is an almost slightly overpowering burst at the beginning of bergamot and lavender. It's quite sharp and, and just very strong almost a bit much in the first half hour. You have to be careful with this one. Sorry, hold on. What? Yeah, I'm doing a, I'm doing a video, mum. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, dinner. Um, all right, yeah. Uh, what, what is it? Oh, we had beans on toast last night. Yeah, spaghetti hoops. Yeah, well, I'll have them instead, please, yeah. No, mm, no, no, be no, beans on toast, beans on toast. Um, ketchup. No, br brown sauce. No, yeah, brown sauce. All right. All right, thanks, Mum. I'll be in here in a minute. After that, the woods come through for an absolutely exquisite dry down. And combined with that lavender, which can have a kind of dusty feel, there's almost this smell that I've seen people on bass notes say is a bit reminiscent of a dusty old library, but in a really nice way. Or perhaps uh, reminiscent of some old wardrobe in a house that's got a really pleasant old wood smell, if that makes any kind of sense. We've got three different woods in there, vetiver, cedarwood, and sandalwood. I will not profess to be able to really always tell the difference between the three, but what I do get is a very strong woody, scent with this one with a dusty almost powdery lavender note in there which some people say it's a barbershop scent because of that lavender i think it's a bit more than barbershop because barbershop to me is just fresh clean manly this one has a bit more density richness and warmth to it much more a cold weather appropriate scent this one by the portugal so whereas green irish tweed tends to be favored in springtime by people this one is absolutely the creed that you can wear in the winter time and the autumn time. For me, it's also fine in spring. I would probably not wear it in warm weather, so I would steer clear in summer. It's very old fashioned smelling. You can, it's gonna be hit or miss with people, this one. You're either gonna say it's dated or you're gonna say it's a timeless classic. For me, it's a timeless classic. I know some people who feel it's dated. It could be a little bit granddaddish, old man smelling, okay? It's a retro fragrance, this one, guys, it really is, but it's excellent. The quality of the materials they've used is so good. The ambergris sweetness in the dry down, combined with that sandalwood and the remnants of the other notes, just creates one of the best dry downs that I've got in any fragrance in my collection. That's why for me, this one is a perfect 10 out of 10. It's again, probably not alluring or sexy to members of the opposite sex, but when you want to feel masculine, it's a very masculine scent, more so than green Irish tweed, which again is masculine, but it's more so. This, this is a great choice. When you're dressed up, when you're wearing a smart suit, formal occasions, weddings, that kind of thing, perhaps a scent that you're gonna wear when you wanna feel good about yourself. You're not desperately thinking about being sexy to other people, but you just wanna give a masculine, mature, sophisticated vibe. There's something about this scent that I think people will smell it and think, wow, that's, un that's unusual. That's something this person has really put some thought about how he presents himself and puts himself together. I'm not sure if I quite get that smell. I'm not sure if I like it, but it, it, he's obviously onto something. He knows something I don't maybe. Um, so I think that that's part of the appeal. It's an enigmatic scent. Um, I think Vava Couture, who appeared in one of my videos, mentioned this one and said it was captivatingly boring. I thought that was a good way of uh, capturing how it smells. A little bit old fashioned, maybe a bit stuffy, but really classic. Another scent I've heard it compared to is vintage Chanel Pour Monsieur. And indeed, even the current version, I can sense there's quite a similarity to me in the smell between this and Chanel Pour Monsieur. Now, th this one is a much denser, richer version of that. So if you find that one really nice, bit frustrated though that it doesn't seem to project that well or last that one that long, this one has great performance, really powerful, lasts ages. Be careful with the sprayer. It's a gentlemanly classic. So if I had to rate this next to Green Irish Tweed, well, in all honesty, I'd give them both 10 out of 10 in terms of recommendability 
Green Irish Tweed edges it because that for me is probably a nine out of 10. Almost anyone's gonna like that one. A few people might find it uh, a little bit too stuffy still because it still has a slightly classic feel, but for most people that is gonna be a really great all round scent for almost any age. This one in terms of versatility and recommendability is probably for people 30, 35 up. Some people say it makes them feel like they're over 50 or something. So this is really for someone who is either quite advanced in their years or wishes to appear or smell mature, but it's absolutely underrated from Creed's line. I personally prefer it to Aventus, that's my personal taste. Recommendability factor on this one, only about a seven out of 10. You must try and see if you like it, but for me, an absolute classic underrated gem, probably my personal favorite from Creed so far. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you like Green Irish Tweed? Do you like Boada Portugal? Have you tried them? Also keep voting for the league table, which is coming soon. Remember, whatever we're doing in life, let's project.